If you want to take your kettlebell coaching career to the next level, consider getting certified with Libby Stock. Check the first link in the description. Ladies and gentlemen, another episode of the Kettle Knights podcast, and I have with me Pavel Krotov. I am sure many of you who have listened to our material, follow us on YouTube, checked out our content. I'm sure that some of you have already seen Pavel. And I'm not talking about, about uh, Pavel Satsulin, because this dude, we all know this dude, right? Yeah. But Pavel Krotov is a kettlebell coach. I, you're from the UK, right? Originally from Latvia, but living ah, in the UK. Yes, I, I, I hear it in, in, in the uh, accent I wanted to ask. So living in the UK, and he has an Instagram and a YouTube channel. So we are cross-pollinating right now because we share a similar audience. And actually, some people already asked about you. They said, hey, wow, I got I got feedback from Pavel Krotov. He said he likes your stuff. And then I replied, well, I like his stuff too. And then they're all hyped and say, oh, awesome. Some experts who agree, actually. This is good stuff. So, Pavel, welcome to the podcast. Well, Gregory, thank you very much to, for having me over here. Um, yeah, my pleasure to join your podcast and quite looking forward to, well, share experience and learn from you as well. Awesome. Awesome. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, that, that's what it, that's exactly what it is. It's a learning experience on this podcast, like I told you before we got started the recording. So here's what I want to know every time we get started is your background. You already shared a little bit of your background before we started the recording, but Tell us how you got started with kettlebells. Why did you stick with kettlebells? What was your plan and where are you now? Uh, well, funnily enough is actually I started first, then stopped. But what happened? In 2004, I came to UK from Latvia. Mm. So I'm, that's where I'm originally from. It was mm -hmm. a bit of an experiment, just purely. I thought like, you know what? I will come to UK for a few months see how things on other side kind of because it was originally it was USSR and Latvia mm -hmm. so kind of mm -hmm. I thought mm -hmm. oh, would be interesting to see how other people live so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. came to UK and unintentionally I kind of stuck over here and <laughs> so I thought I'll stay for a little bit longer and of course uh, because I didn't know anyone I couldn't really speak language like so like I couldn't speak English at all. So I don't know, like I had quite a lot of time on my hands and I started going in the gym. So that's probably when kind of I first really got interested in fitness and just like training mm. uh, and kind of building, start building up from mm. there. So mm -hmm. I did thought like, oh, that's something I really enjoyed. I found like as I'm training, get more confidence, like with how I move, how I feel, like what I can do. I did look into kind of uh, personal training courses. Mm. And then because my English wasn't great, I thought oh, it's not something I can do at this point. But it kind of was always playing on the back of my mind. So, but all this time I was going to the gym and like it started from just a normal gym mm. and I think I came across once must be Paolo Tatsulin one of the old videos one yeah, of the yeah. original yeah, yeah. like videos I think back. I think uh, sorry to interrupt you brother but I think everybody who got in contact with kettlebells after the 2000s in the west somehow got it through Pavel. Yeah. So, and that's just, just to interject real quick. I think that's one of the reasons why Pavel Tatsulin will always be part of the conversation when it revolves around kettlebells, right? You, you agree? Oh, absolutely. And um, it's something like, maybe because of the similar names, he like, okay, I'm gonna listen to what he have to say. And yeah. also he like, <laughs> saying like okay comrades <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. i'm paying attention now <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm paying, oh, I, uh, another question you see uh, these questions already pop up so when when pavel came out with this shtick with this uh, the russian right so yeah. comrades listen um because you 
are originally from an ex-Soviet Union country, right? So that connected with you as two, or was it like, come on, man, don't don't play that tough guy? I think it's definitely there is something you like. I, you know what? Like he talks funny, just like me. He, yeah. <laughs> he uh, and you think like, oh, you know what? In some way, because I didn't really use kettlebell before, and mm, I thought like, mm. oh, that's a weird piece of equipment, like. Mm -hmm. let me get mm -hmm. it <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so so that's why i thought like i'm gonna order my first kettlebell so mm -hmm. obviously i went for i thought like oh, i'm quite reasonably fit let's get mm -hmm. 20 kilos mm -hmm. let's kind mm -hmm. of learn with that mm -hmm. and <laughs> after day one covered in bruises i thought like, actually <laughs> and how long how long is that ago when when, when you bought your first kettlebell uh, about nearly 15 years ago sometime 15 like years wow yeah. wow yeah. see what's so funny is i'm having conversations with people on this podcast who have been using or who got in contact with kettlebells so long ago you know in in my timeline i consider the 2000s as the modern renaissance of kettlebells in the west so i got into contact way later so you're an og you got contacted way earlier than me with kettlebells, yeah. <laughs> well, awesome. yeah, yes and no, but it, it's kind of one of those pieces of equipment you kind of, you get absolutely like, oh, I'm going to learn how to do like a clean and snatch. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's like the kettlebell like quickly teach you lesson back that you have no <laughs> clue how to use it. <laughs> exactly. And it's exactly. took me quite, and in some way you kind of, from one side you feel like, oh, you know what? I really want to kind of learn how to do it properly, like, but there was mm -hmm. not as much kind of information online, then maybe I wasn't really knowing where to look mm -hmm. and kind of was just studying more of his videos. Mm -hmm. I then in some way I thought probably I knew quite a lot, probably if I had a chance to record it and send it back. It would be completely different. <laughs> I probably would be able, like, oh my god, like I shouldn't have used it. But I think in some way that's kind of sparked the interest as well. So you mm, kind of, yeah. because point. it wasn't really Good straightforward, point. it wasn't easy. You had to kind of put a little bit of time to do some research. Mm -hmm. Kind of, you put you, you kind of start getting a bit more invested into that as well. Emotionally, you feel like okay. I spend this time learning about the tool, like when it's become easy, <laughs> but mm -hmm. it wasn't. It's actually, it's actually a very good point because it's a skill based tool. It can peak interest, right? Because you're normally the traditional gym culture is fairly easy to understand aside from some very complicated barbell exercises, but I think that's such an interesting point to make, which which I didn't even think about. Sometimes it's a turn off for people, right? Where they say, "Not, nah, that's that's way too hard to learn," and sometimes it may be like, "Wow, I actually have to do some work, right, and put in some skill." Yeah. Mm. No, absolutely, one hundred percent. So I think as well. Then what happened? Kind of when I, I start work, working as a personal trainer in the gym, so I start working in a corporate gym. Mm -hmm. Uh, so with some finance people and mm -hmm. I think one of the days I brought this kettlebell put in my locker was trying to use it when I had time to use but I wasn't allowed actually I've been told like you actually can't use it over here because it's not safety checked <laughs> we have man we have a similar story right here I was me too I was working in a corporate gym and I wasn't allowed to use a kettlebell at all and they also told me, then I was like a friend of mine, he was swinging with plates. Yeah. He, grab, he was grabbing a 10 kilogram plate and he started swinging. So I started imitating him and they told me, no, 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 no. We don't do this around here. <laughs> Funny, yeah. So yeah. But in some way, luckily what happened in return, because like I was trying to still bring it in, my boss actually like my manager said like okay how about we kind of organize a proper course you get all trained and then we get uh some kettlebells in so i don't know 
more than 10 years, 10 years or so ago. So that's when we had a kind of course. Uh, it was one day or two days course. So you learn the basics. Mm -hmm. And it's quite RKC or no, to be fair, it wasn't one of those, uh, unfortunately, at this point, I don't think mm. it was teaching, it, it wasn't as kind of straightforward back in uh, back then as well. Because even like some even like um, strong first courses, you have to go to Birmingham, like you have to travel outside of London. But they had mm. some a coach that it was like certified, uh, like a program course. Mm. And we had a coach came in, and it was I don't know like twelve of us, and mm -hmm. we had the day course uh, where when we learn how to use kettlebells. So kind of, but I think it's like any tool. It's like one of those. You once you learn the basics, you will have been kind of. Okay, go outside and explore, and you carry on crafting, kind of carry on mm. improving your craft. Because mm. I, I, I would agree, and and also have another perspective. You're most definitely right that once you have the basics down pat, you can venture out a little bit on your own. But having the basics down pat requires a knowledgeable teacher to show you exactly how the basics work. Because I remember trying the basics by myself, and then I got enlightened by Steve Cotter. And then I realized, okay, wow, I was doing it completely wrong. So with your knowledge that you have today, if you can harken back and remember or think back to the time when you had this certified course, how was the knowledge presented to you back then with the knowledge that you have now in comparison? Was it good or was it like, ah, uh, was better than nothing? Uh, I think overall, I think it was good, but it's mm. all what you kind of, uh, what can you compare with? Yeah. Oh, when, good point. Yeah. Mm. So if we, back then, if I had a chance to compare several courses, like one to another, like you will be like, okay, this is definitely better. This is definitely worse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at that level, like, or so at that, point when you learn something new skill you're like oh my god I actually i'm not hurting myself anymore yeah this I is have... a huge win <laughs> yes. yeah it's it's a win <laughs> yes but kind of they, later down the year like years down the line like even like i get i, I learned uh, a lot from myself like doing those youtube videos like for someone and i have this evidence when i can look back and thinking like Oh, actually, that's how I used to move. Mm -hmm. I don't do it anymore. Maybe, maybe mm -hmm. timing mm -hmm. is better. Maybe you know, yeah. technique like the way how you move slightly. Yeah. yeah, it's it's feel like you always, you know, like certain moves you can learn like overall, like any information. We absorb only like 15, 20 percent of information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and see, that's it's such a good point that you're raising. And that's exactly the reason why I told you before we got started with the recording that I'm learning so much through these conversations because I keep hearing similar patterns all over again, which then really turns into valuable knowledge that I can apply and that I can use. So being exposed con on a continuous basis to professionals or experts, proper folks in, in, in kettlebell training can really advance your, your level of knowledge so much. Because as you say, if you only do it once, you maybe catch, what, 10% mm -hmm. of it maybe? So you have to be continuously exposed to these ideas, right? Absolutely. So kind of if we take it, going back to a question like, regarding the course mm -hmm. if i would do it now again i probably would have better understanding now because i wouldn't be uh focusing as much like on 20 percent, which is quite easy to understand i would be focusing on those two grains of gold here and there the big rocks yeah yeah well that's uh, yeah at the beginning you just that's all you can see is the big that's rocks. all you can see exactly yeah yeah, yeah you're uh, such 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 a good point you know it's 
the big rocks is the actually I'm I, I was saying something wrong. The big rocks is the thing that you focus on when you learn. Yeah. And once you have gotten the understanding, you are then able to reach a level where you can focus on these minute details, right? That yeah. is that what you're trying to say, right? On the gra mm -hmm. yeah, on the grain of gold in exactly. those rocks. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Good yeah. point. So then I'm, I'm and th this is something that I just have to say. I always have, have such a huge amount of respect from people who decided to leave their home country, go into another country, and then just, you know, let's see, let's see what's out there, right? I mean, that requires a lot of courage and knowledge. So that's, I, I have a friend who, um, he is originally from Slovakia, and then he came into Swiss, came to Switzerland, and now he built himself. He has a family now, and he has a, a an awesome, a great job, and he's doing well. But he started at the bottom, so this is something that is so inspiring and always so such a powerful message for people to just you know. I went out there and I tried it, and now I mean you're you're now in the UK for over ten years, right? Uh, 2004, so nearly twenty yeah. years. Yeah, uh, nearly, nearly twenty years. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. so then you uh, got started with the course. Yeah. So your manager was like, yeah, now you got, now you're certified, let's go. And you mentioned somewhere along the lines that you started and you stopped. So what yeah. happened there? Uh, so we got the kettlebells, but the mm -hmm. kettlebells as usual, it was restricted to certain weight because anything more than 20 kilos suddenly become even more dangerous. Mm. Um, like any tool, I think as well, once you learn the basics, you can progress quite exactly. nicely. As exactly. you progress and you suddenly have nowhere to grow anymore, you suddenly like, okay, I have only 20 kilos kettlebell over here, or I have the bar which I can load like whatever I want. Mm -hmm. So I kind of stopped using the kettlebells for quite a while. But in some way, what happened next kind of is I got bored like of everything. I kind of like 10 years of doing gym training I couldn't kind of find the kind of same drive to train with the weights, do mm. kettlebell. It just see kind of like, in some way, a little bit like, what next? Like in some, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. when that's when I went to jujitsu, ah. and that's something like okay, like some skinny dude like just choked me out like and <laughs> to the point like. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I need to figure out because how comes like I've been doing all this <laughs> training <laughs> and he just uh, kicked my ass like, yeah. over here and uh. handed over to me. But so isn't, I... it, isn't, it, isn't it always the same thing that you have, you can be a master in one thing and a complete novice in another thing? I've just seen, for example, on Instagram, uh, I think his Instagram handle is Persian Yoga mm -hmm. and he does some very interesting stuff with uh, meals these Persian these Persian meals these huge blocks it's like clubs but they're so big and wooden right meals I think they call them and then I saw him using the mace for the first time and when he was using the mace he looked like a complete novice even though he was a master with the meals so yeah. probably the same happened to you right you can be strong with kettlebells but when you yeah. work for the first time you start jiu-jitsu you are a beginner again right you begin again you exactly. have to learn again exactly but there is quite like a lot of kind of nice about that when you're like oh actually i can learn something new skill or new, mm. new mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. you always realize there is so many other things you can progress and like so I kind of started doing jiu-jitsu and this kind of brought back kind of my interest in weights, training with weights again. So but at this point, again, because the kettlebells was I was start introducing kettlebells back again, like with like some swings, some basics, like but combin in combination. So a bit of a hybrid in combination mm. with Aha, I like that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the hybrids <laughs> yeah so bar work yeah kettlebells jujitsu yeah. cool uh but kind of fast forward kind of to covid when everything suddenly start kind of yeah. shutting down you're trying to like you realize actually i'm not going to be coming back to the gym anytime soon 
all I had in my in my shed is my old kettlebell, which I bought 15 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's when I kind of start coming back to it. And wow. because I'm like, okay, I have to make it do. I don't have anything heavier. I, that's all I have. I tend to might have to pre-exhaust myself and mm -hmm. combine with some like other exercises, but this 20 kilos get well hat like just must do exactly and because kind of that's all what tool i had in my hands and kind of i thought okay i have some time and she was trying to help some of my clients who were stuck at home with in the similar situation i'm like okay let's put some put some content some more cats on youtube mm -hmm to help those few people. Luckily, no one else see it anyway. <laughs> so. Yeah, the first videos are always the worst videos, right? But that that's normal. That's like your first swings are your worst swings. It's, it's you have you just have to get used to it. So do I understand this correctly? It's you, you were, so you emigrated from Latvia into the UK. You started working at a gym, right? As a personal coach. So you got in contact with kettlebells and then you did a course. Then the manager was like, Hey, uh, let's, let's use some kettlebells at the corporate facility. And then you kind of stopped, went into jujitsu. And then thanks to the ta pandemic, you yeah. came back to the kettlebell, right? Is, is that, is that the, your that's, yeah, trajectory? That's exactly. Yeah. yeah. And to be fair, once I start using the kettlebells more like during pandemics uh, uh, pandemic i realized actually i'm not so stiff anymore like because when you're using the gym like when you're using like heavy such a good point yeah. you constantly like feel like you need to kind of go heavier yeah you yeah. constantly like such stiff a... like a brick all the time <laughs> <laughs> such a good point i wanted to ask this question pavel i wanted to ask what is the major difference between your gym self and your kettlebell self? Stop chasing kind of something which like, or come, I think as well, when you kind of in the gym environment, one mm -hmm. of the reasons I can see why like some people hate to go in the gym. If you're trying to come in the gym and there's some like dudes who like deadlifting, like 300 kilos, like squatting, mm. 200 kilos, you like, you always feel like you don't compare it to anyone else. You always compare to this. Yes, to you feel elite. like you yeah. need to chase something what yeah. you probably don't need to chase. Oh, that's a good point. Um, mm. Of course, I think originally kind of when I went in into the gym, part of the reason was not only like get stronger, kind of feel better, but kind of one of the initial drives was like a bit of an aesthetic. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Like, Mm. But kind of, I think with the kettlebell, it's like when you don't have to prove yourself uh, self to anyone, when you kind of at home, it's only you and the kettlebell mm. Mm. kind of takes away some of the distraction. You just like, okay, that's what I'm focusing on. I just want to get this kettlebell <laughs> from the floor to my shoulder level to over the head. Happy days. Let's <laughs> see how, how much I can do. So you kind of... So it's you, like a little bit more you versus you, but also like when you realize actually, like because you're using it's like a single piece of equipment, like it's, so you suddenly realize, oh, actually my core workout, I need to do some extra crunches at the end or something like that. <laughs> like my core is done at work. Like, and I think especially with, when you look into, uh, like jujitsu or martial arts it's everything single side you're not always like pushing in one direction you're squatting mm -hmm. it's always one hand away pulling with one hand you always mm -hmm. some weird twisted positions so i think it was feeling like the kettlebells works mm -hmm. so much better mm -hmm. without like <laughs> destroying my body in some way so that's the yeah these are let's say like circumstantial differences that you have noticed and you've already mentioned briefly touched on this and i want you to elaborate a little bit on it mm -hmm. if you don't mind 
you you mentioned the stiffness went away. So what is the major difference between your gym self and the kettlebell self physical quality wise? Funnily enough, like if we just compare, like I went a few times, like, like now I hardly ever go in the gym. Like mm -hmm. I go like once every few, I don't know, a few weeks or something like that. But I was expecting in some way, like, because I'm using much lighter weight, lighter kettlebells, I would expect to lose quite a fair amount of gains, mm -hmm. uh, like the strength. But when I come to the same weights, which I was using like uh, three years ago, before kind of I stopped going in the gym, mm -hmm. it's quite, you think like, where is this coming from? You know, mm -hmm. like, but it's all from the, like, using those small muscles like using single kettlebell like uh, kind of you activates all the small muscles like it's slightly different when everything in the gym is quite balanced like mm -hmm. yeah. have equal okay. equal weights from each side like mm -hmm. so so yeah i think it's like in some way kind of surprisingly you're like actually come that's it's interesting because i I have noticed that my my barbell bench press went down, mm. most definitely, and uh, the deadlift I think went down as well. I, I'm hearing different stories, but in my it's just uh, from my perspective, mm -hmm. which is to a certain extent. Um, uh, and how old are you? If I mind, don't mind uh, asking. Well, next month forty, sir. So. <laughs> Oh, okay. So you're, you're, yeah, you're my age. I mean, you look great for your age. Man. I, I thought you were like 28 something, 29. No. Yeah, no, we're seriously. Best friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now you're sending me gifts to the next birthday. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I like this, man. Yeah, but that's training, right? That's the fountain of youth. That That's what it really is. And, but, and, and one thing that I, while I do see your point, I also consider, I also think, um, you, while you might lose on some, gains let's say like i was more muscular when i was in the gym most definitely because i was i was doing strictly hypertrophy work yeah. so i i was having more bulging muscles that's that that's 100 percent. and i was a little bit stronger yes but here are other qualities that i've built now my strength endurance my respiratory endu endurance my cardiovascular endurance my power my explosiveness Man, and you mentioned this the stiffness went away completely i remember the first time i was doing a a overhead press or just just a press and and i was so and i see this with our clients maybe you see this too people are so stiff that yeah. the elbow is never most of the time for a beginner Unless they have very good mobility, most people, when they say straighten your arm or ahead, it looks like this. The elbow's fairly bent, and they, they maybe lean back when they try to extend their arms fully. So I think the kettlebell really stretches you in a way that is uh, very unique. And of course, the unilateral loading, because you work with one side, gives you just huge benefits. So I would say, even though I might have lost some strength and muscle gains, I have... I have gained on all these other physical qualities of human performance that I didn't have before. So I feel even more fitter than I felt back then. But in your case, you st are you still able to, to pull the same weights like, like you did back in the day? Uh, very similar, to be fair. Like, I wouldn't say wow. like exactly, but uh, like I kind of, let's say about a month ago it's yep. not like comparing to anyone like yeah, yeah i went to the gym the guys was doing some like um one rep max uh, ah, like, uh -huh. and i wasn't kind of properly even warmed up and because the the, uh, the plates was not like a competition like a proper competition place there was quite weird shape i thought on the bar it was 70 kilos mm -hmm. okay so so I, I didn't like i'm like oh just let me just uh, uh uh do a couple of like do a rep or see mm -hmm. how it's mm -hmm. feel because i thought like i haven't done any chest press for ages yeah yeah and i jumped down a couple of sets they're like oh well done and they Great. was like i'm like oh it was like hunger 10 or something like that wow yeah. so i was quite surprised of me yeah. because as yeah. i said i haven't been doing like any 
bar work for like interesting yes yeah, like three years or something wow. like that and, and and what was your uh, what was your uh, pr in the bench oh back then uh probably about one two five one thirty like wow, wow. one thirty kilograms back kind of when i used to train wow. like one, yeah, yeah but that's heavy man wow that's good stuff that's... Uh, well depends who you're comparing yeah to. <laughs> of course if we compare it to all these instagram folks who uh who have bench pressed 200 kilos for 10 reps of course it's it's nothing <laughs> no but this is just some serious numbers because i was but you see so and that's that's the point that i'm getting at my max was probably 110 110 kilos uh, i'm a fairly uh lightweight small small dude so i don't have i'm not equipped god didn't intend for me to be equipped with with huge muscles and 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 a lot of strength but i i did i used what i was given let's let's put it like this and then my max was 110 with the bench press my deadlift was something around 170 and my ki kilogram and my uh, squat was something like 140 or yeah max 140 and now i i'm not able to reach these numbers and that's that's the point that i'm getting at do you think you would be able to crank out a couple of reps with 120 or 130 like back in the day uh with the chest bench press one yeah yeah back in the day yeah it was like yeah and today yeah. if you would if you would uh, do it today, today well as i said like uh, what months ago it was uh was 70 right under, but i thought maybe because i didn't realize how heavy it was if i knew it's heavy i wouldn't have done it so it mm. was 110 so i pushed it out thinking like oh um i thought this was about 70 kilos because mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. i said the place was yeah. weird yeah. i didn't even yeah. look what was there but then they said it's actually 110 and i was like oh like I, it was 110 yeah oh wow yeah wow uh, that's massive man wow. well <laughs> i think there's some impressive guys as well when you kind of see some guys doing like several two, over 200 kilos deadlift and i'm like okay i can't do it but yeah yeah yeah. but i mean we i think we've reached an age bracket where uh, hopefully we don't compare ourselves to uh, i at least i really that's that's why i all almost not not really 100 percent, but i I'm really shutting down my Instagram and social media consumption because I'm, I, I, I think I've reached an age bracket where I don't. I just want to stop comparing myself with, with other folks. And and I, I what I want to see is I want to be inspired by people who do what I do, and and have a similar physique like I am, like I have, and who are dedicated to their work. That's what I'm inspired by. What I've stopped being inspired by. Uh, inspired by is, is folks who are just uh juiced up do it for, for 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 views and likes and and instagram and youtube only and then they crank out these numbers and i, I just recently heard a doctor said he said uh, social media is is awful for um for your mental health right i mean you all oh, yeah. know this so that's why i've stopped comparing myself i'm, I'm going on a tangent a little bit but what, what i'm going to say is i i hear this quite a lot that people say well i'm i'm still having the same strength um reserves like i had back in the day and the only th this is where i kind of like well i i i would assume that you still have some similar strength levels but they definitely do go down if you if you stop bench pressing these heavy weights or you stop deadlifting these heavy weights because your neuromuscular system is because as we know max strength has to do with your neuromuscular system yeah. so if you stop using these monstrosities of heavy as, of, of heavy weights your strength levels will go down to a yeah. certain extent right so so and that's kind of like sometimes i believe the misconception that that i hear sometimes people say when they say well you know i still have the same strength levels even though i train completely differently now which is what i love kettlebells but i don't think they have this amount of power or this amount of of versatility to give you the same gains that you had back back when you were focusing on only one particular physical quality you, you get what i'm saying no, I hear you. Yeah, completely. I hear you. I, mm. To be fair, I like I'm quite. I think kettlebells like surprise me quite uh, often. Like, and I think they do translate so well. Like, 
and yeah, like doing like swings, quarters, like when you actually go after like, uh, I went under the bar as well doing squats. I was quite fine with like squatting like hunger killers, not like it's mm. anyone like trying to impress anyone, but I was hurting more from the bar next day than actually like my legs. But mm -hmm. I was hurting from the bar, <laughs> kind of sitting mm -hmm. on my back on my shoulders more mm -hmm. <laughs> than actually the legs mm. and what I was expecting. I was thinking mm. like, mm. and in, as I said, because I don't really go under the bar as often, but when you do, you think like, well, actually, like, I, I don't, I haven't lost as much as I, I thought I would be. Interesting. You, know? you don't always feel like, okay you you're losing certain it's like anything like if you don't use it you lose it you're losing yeah. a certain percent but i think kettlebells like really helped me to hold like the strength level the mm -hmm. added endurance as well so mm. I don't just think a, a different type of strength at least i mean that that's what kettlebells equip you with right it's it's that you are experiencing probably a different kind of strength especially since that's one thing with the squat for example you probably increase your squat if you keep squatting heavy and you add some swings and some cleans and some uh, uh typical ballistical works where your ballistical work where your hips have to do a lot of work then like you have experienced under the bar you are now probably pushing more efficiently with your legs and from your glutes and quads because you use them so much now with the kettlebell right yeah. So that's something that I would also uh, ascribe to and say, yeah, that's probably a reason. But sometimes I think even though, like I mentioned, even though I love kettlebells, um, for example, you will lose muscle. If you, if you train like the traditional gym where you focus on hypertrophy only yeah. and now you switch to kettlebells, you will lose some amount of muscle because it's just not the same type of training and you have you don't have the same type of focus like in the traditional gym setting would you agree or disagree yes like, like to be fair yeah you like you absolutely can lose and i think it's one of those things you just like with with the with the gym you, you go inside you can go in normally completely different mm -hmm. program especially yeah, exactly focus on the uh uh, focusing on hypertrophy, you hammering mm -hmm. same muscle group from different mm -hmm. angles, exactly. three, four exercises. With the kettlebell, you don't tend to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, I sometimes I kind of split upper. One day I do like to focus on upper, another mm -hmm. focus mm -hmm. on uh, lower. It's not really a traditional way of training with the kettlebells, but why not? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> of course, that that's something that we have to add. Yes, you're right. I mean, you can use the kettlebell for a, as a hypertrophy tool, of course, because it's a weight. So of course you can uh, use it like that. But the incremental loading is a little bit different. So yeah. it's probably not the perfect tool for hypertrophy. And I wouldn't I wouldn't use it if you would ask me. Let's say, like, yeah, I need the perfect tool for hyper, uh, tool for hypertrophy. I would say, hey, machines and and cables. Right. Yeah. That's one of the best things for hypertrophy. Right. So um, let's jump a little bit uh, further. So the pandemic hit, you started working with some of the clients that you've retained from the gym, probably, I'm assuming. Yeah. And, and what happened then? Well, to be fair, that's kind of initially the plan was working with the people who um, was working in the gym. To be fair, I didn't even want to uh, do any online training. I felt like oh, it's not, yeah. it was, I wasn't comfortable with the situation in terms of, like, oh, you know what, I'm not in front, uh, comfortable in front of the camera. I don't want to, I need my gym environment where I'm kind of, I know what I'm doing, I'm mm -hmm. comfortable. But as this was happening, like, was taking longer than anyone thought. Yeah, it would most make, definitely, yeah. Mm. You're like, okay let's see the ways how we can help my clients and that's mm -hmm. kind of people who i already knew that uh these people was my main focus because like i was thinking okay once it's over i'm back in the gym and that was the game plan 
And um, when I came back in the gym, I came back an empty building because uh, the uh, uh, financial company, which kind of was employing us, uh, the people still was carrying on working from home. And you, I came back in the built empty building and thinking well, like, yeah. You know what? I still training people online, and I have some more people reaching out, like asking for help, mm -hmm. or they need to, like, yeah. So, so you kind of, I don't know. It wasn't intentional, or it wasn't a kind of which my part of the plan. Mm. But then I thought, you know what? Maybe I should try to give it a bit better thought and see if it's something I would like to do mm -hmm. and that's kind of i handed my notice because i thought i can't be going all the way i live outside of london so mm. it's taken me taking me about an hour to get wow. Into to london city, yeah. uh -huh. to empty, sit in an empty building like with the, all the machines and <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah so he kind of i thought you know what i'll hand in my notice and see i have like I thought in the, if the worst comes to worst, I can come can come back in the gym. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. kind of now I have a bit of savings. I have some kind of some some time and like maybe I, <laughs> I need to take it a bit more serious. So that's yeah. kind of right. Start developing into online and now kind of working with a lot of actually parents and busy professionals who still stack at home and can't go in the gym. <laughs> so. But are you working with people who are still living under these restrictions or no. people who just don't want to go to the gym, right? They're like, hey, I want to do everything. They I can't. Think Ah, yeah, because they're so busy. Ah, because they're yeah. so busy. Ah, like, okay. if, yeah. if, like, if I'm taking myself back, like, when I started the gym, like, when I was, what, 25 or so, mm, mm. going back, I couldn't figure out why those people, like, uh, how me have to explain those educated people that they need to look after themselves mm -hmm. and they put the kind of their health on the back, kind of, and mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. like a at the lowest priority and all day working long hours like why kind of why then can't go and train three times or four times in the gym how they can't dedicate an hour like a day to do a workout like it was kind of in some way bizarre for me because i'm like if i can do it everyone can do it but then when, when you get into this age and when you have mortgage to pay you have full-time job or you're working for 12 hours you have kids wife all the other kind of external factors and you realize actually no i don't maybe have one and a half hour to go to the gym yeah. for, like commute yeah. to the gym train for an hour yeah. change and stuff like. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm, mm. so i think the kettlebell is actually suddenly become perfect tool actually for those people to use it's uh if you can train only 20 minutes or half an hour you'd rather do it <laughs> with like at home maybe and get the consistency and make yeah. it part of your life mm -hmm. then try to go in the gym once a week for an hour and then don't go again because something kind of at home got like the kids are uh, uh, i don't know sick they need you need to go home or the mm -hmm. work is too busy you suddenly mm -hmm. instead of going in the gym you have to stay in the office for longer mm -hmm. so now i actually work with like majority of my kind of people who i work I don't have enough time to go in the gym but they trying to introduce the like fitness get the consistency mm -hmm. sometimes in some cases we train they just can train like for 20 30 minutes that's all mm. they can do mm. no. but this way sometimes it's better not the perfect workout yeah yeah yeah. but it's better than nothing yeah yeah the, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah yeah and, and then i've you, been you know. there myself when i had those plan b workouts when i would train for a month 
for maybe only 20 minutes when my dinner in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> you put the dinner in the oven, you know, okay, I have, <laughs> I have minutes. 20 minutes. So, but you're, you're raising this good point. I mean, I'm saying this so many times. I'm repeating myself, but you're raising this good point of what I call the most bang for your buck ideology where yeah. you need to get a lot of return on your investment when you invest your time into training, for example. And and while I do see your point, I mean, I run a gym, I have, but we're a personal training gym, so we're exclusively focused on kettlebells, but I still yeah. run a gym. I I do see two sides of the coin. I think you're right that people who are more busy in their lives, that they uh, find it harder to make time. Yet at the end of the day, it also depends on your priorities. I think especially, I'm just assuming a lot of stuff that you have. Uh, if you have a family, that you have a wife, that you're working together, that both of you are taking care of, the chi of, of your children. Of course, if you're a single parent, this whole thing changes and makes it more difficult. I do understand it. Yet at the same time, isn't it sometimes a a paradox that, yeah, you know, I work 12 hours a day, then I got to take care of my, I, then I have to take care of my family, this and that and this and that. And you, you mentioned this, you put your health on the back burner. You don't make time because actually you said they don't have time. Well, they actually, they have time because they work with you now. So they make time, even if it's just 30 minutes, but they have to make time. And I think that's that's an important part of this whole conversation of how do I fit fitness into my context and daily life if it's so busy? Well, that's exactly why you need a coach, because you have to have somebody who pulls you out of this out of out of your daily life and your grind, so to speak, to focus a little bit on your health. Because if you don't focus on your health now for the short term, long term, you will be required to take care of your health because it's breaking down. And then you cannot work your 12 hours anymore. You cannot take care of your family. So you're raising this good point. And one thing that I explained, you, you mentioned you found it bizarre that people don't make time or don't find time for it. I think it is perfectly well explained in the Time Management Matrix by Stephen Covey. Have you heard of this? Is it how much given time you take to make the task as long as... Um, no, 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 it's something time. different. It's, it's, you, have, you have to imagine you have a box, right? Yeah. A square box. And then you put four squares into the box. So you have four squares in one box, right? And then at the top of, of, of the one box, you write important. Yeah. And on the, on, uh, on the left side, of the, of the le left-hand side. And at the top side, in the first box, where it goes down, you write um, necessary, right? Important, yeah. or, or what was it? Wait, 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 I'm, I'm, um, important, wichtig und um, dringend. Oh, what, what's the word for man? I got, I got to translate, wait. I got to translate, uh, urgent, 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 urgent. yes. Yeah. So it's important and then you have uh, urgent, right? And then you have the second box where it says at the top, not urgent. Then you have the bottom part where it says not important. So you have to imagine now we have this square box. You have these four squares in one box. At the left hand side, we have important. At the top side, we have urgent. On the bottom side, we have not important. And on the right hand top side, you have uh, not urgent. So he says most people spend their life in box number one, important and urgent. That's the family, that's job requirements, kids are sick, you have a illness that you have to take care of, you have a project deadline, whatever have you. So 90% of people spend or let's say most people spend 90% of their time inside this one box right would you agree yeah, uh, yeah I agree. great and then we have box number two where it says important but not urgent i love this box and stephen covey says in this box we have activities like reading a book personal development watching your nutrition daily training or activity healthy exercise all that stuff that is important but not urgent
Because if I don't watch my nutrition today, I'm not fat tomorrow. If I don't train today, I'm not out of shape tomorrow. Right? So it's important, but not urgent. Yeah, I have a right? lot of time for that. <laughs> and most people... <laughs> Maybe most not. most people don't spend any time in box number two. And then you have box number three where it says it is uh, not important but urgent. These are phone calls, messages, uh, folks who always always want something from you. So th things that that really push you out of your flow and then yeah. you have to react to it. But it's actually probably not important. Yeah. You don't have to call me. You can just write me a text, for example, right? And then you have the final box that says not important and not urgent. That's vacation, that's leisure time, that's Netflix, that's hanging out on Instagram and social media and stuff. And, and that's where most people spend their time in. So they spend people, most people spend their time in box one, yeah. important and urgent, and in box number four, not important and not urgent. And people have to find time to spend more time in box number two, where it says it is important, but not urgent. This was such an eye opener to me as to how people handle their time. And the next time somebody tells you, I don't have time, just tell them, show me your screen time. Oh uh, yeah, I, I know that. But, um, show think... me your screen time, brother. Come on, man. How much time are you spending on Instagram? on youtube and we we are the generation who grew who i mean the next generation now grows up with that stuff and we are the ones who got into it but we are just as hooked as everybody else we are just as consumed on that stupid little device like everybody else so just to be real is i don't have time show me a screen time i like 100 percent agree i right? found uh, even a <laughs> post myself <laughs> that uh, yeah. I did like one of my emails I was sending to payroll that like just showing like I had like how much time I spend and I, that, that's my job yeah mm -hmm. so like I spent hours and hours and wasting and I know myself but I think is well what it's one of this kind of things is we are creatures sort of habits if your habit that uh, spending like watch netflix at 9 p.m like till 10 p.m or 12 p.m mm -hmm. then like from my side i i need to show how uh, like to my clients where they can find this time instead of watching from 9 p.m like till 12 p.m let's watch from 9 p.m till 10 30 you're going to sleep a bit earlier wake up earlier you, mm -hmm. you found some some time to train it's in if it's not part of the habit for you if it's yeah. training not part of your routine if it's yeah. not part of your habit it's quite difficult to find the time but once from my side the, the job is like to hold your hand till it's become part of your habit exactly. and to the point exactly. that you feel at the moment you might feel uncomfortable you need to find the time for this you might exactly. need to train you're going through the workout you feel uncomfortable mm. but as soon as you're going through the workout and feel like well feel uncomfortable but as soon as you don't go through the workout and you feel uncomfortable because you haven't done it my my job is done yeah, because I want to to help a client to get to this point when they're uncomfortable not to train. At the beginning, they're uncomfortable tra to train. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to be, uh, for them be uncomfortable if they don't train. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes, yeah, it's just starting. If you don't have time, let's start with 15, 20 minutes. Uh, if you don't have time, Okay, give me 30 minutes of your attention or yeah. follow this program X for 30 minutes or tw uh, 20 minutes. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just move. Just get, yeah, get yeah. in. Get and in. you got the first yeah. brick in the, uh, yeah, first brick in the, uh, in the wall. Yeah. Then let's yeah. focus on next brick. Exactly. It's, if it's it, nutrition, we don't need to change everything let's yeah. have a look what you have enough for breakfast let's yeah. let's see if it's something we can improve exactly it's a small steps right yeah. it's exactly how we do 
uh, things as well. Yet at the same time, since I've been doing this now for seven years, I am now, I just recently talked to Angie and I told her, you know what, we are now following the no BS approach with our clients. So I don't want to fool anybody. I am empathetic. I am loving. I want to help you. I want to understand you and I want to uh, be your guide and stay right there next to you. But don't tell me you eat healthy if you're overweight because you don't. And it's not a bad right right that, that, that that's plain reality and that's and it's not a bad thing so it's not it's always i think maybe you experience this too then people they tell you well you know i've been i've been working out regularly for you know the last six months i was doing blah 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 i was like okay for the net last 10 years how many times did you train well well not that often just tell me well not at all see because I had one of our clients, he was sitting uh, here and, and we started the conversation. He, he started our six months program where he wants to lose weight with kettlebell training and with our nutrition coaching. So we started and he said, you know what, now I also have a gym membership. So I'm starting with you and I also have the membership from last year. And now my plan is to work out with you. The, the goal with him is now he wants to show up twice a week, right? So two workouts per week. And then he said, and I want to, you know, two workouts per week. And then I go into the gym and I do my 20 minutes of cardio three times per week. What do you think? And I said, you know what? This is going to burn you out quickly. Just focus on these two sessions that you have with us. I don't want to discourage you from moving. Not at all. But in six, in, in four months, uh, four weeks time, you will see that making time for two workouts per week, showing up at the gym, training for 45 minutes, and he has to drive here for 30 minutes, so it's a long time away from home. This is going to be tough. And you won't want to make time for other things that take time away from your family, for example, if you have already been to the gym. So you don't have to, or you have already worked out, so you don't have to. And then I asked him the question. I was like, how many times did you work out for the last five years? I'm not, I'm not telling you for the last three months. I'm asking for the last five years. Is it a regular habit? Because if you're now telling me, you know, for the last five years, I was going to the gym every, or, or I was, let's say, it doesn't have to be the gym. I was riding my bicycle every week, at least for, for one hour for the last five years. Then we have a habit. And then I don't want you to break it. I'm like, hey, keep, keep riding your bicycle. And now we add kettlebells on top of it. But like you mentioned, we are creatures of habit. If you haven't built this habit yet, don't add it into the mix because now you want to add the habit of regular kettlebell training. No. What's your experience in that regard? Well, to be fair, that is like, I can see exactly why and I completely understand why people start in the January and they crash because they're trying to change so many habits at once. Yeah. They don't have a habit to train they don't have a habit of meal prep they don't have habit of going for regular walks and move through the day and suddenly you need three hours out of your day for this new habit you mm -hmm. might get all right for a uh, a week two mm -hmm. weeks mm -hmm. but if you need to find 15 hours to something new yeah. which is uncomfortable to something new which you're not used to do it and yeah pulling away from uh, the, this time from your kids and wife who will be like okay you had your fun now but come mm. back <laughs> to the mm. family and from so, your life in general right it's not just family from yeah. you, your leisure time is taken yeah. away right yeah yeah and because that's why going all out some cases work really well but in the most cases it doesn't work you need to spend some time to build certain habits like anything it's same like with the kettlebell swing more you do you more you kind of become more efficient more stronger your timing is better you need to dedicate some time to it going through the reps mm -hmm. same with nutrition if mm -hmm. you haven't been eating certain way if you're not used to eat certain way maybe you have to learn suddenly five new recipes mm -hmm. and it takes longer it's instead of 
20 minutes cooking it's take 45 minutes mm -hmm. so it's all this require extra time extra yeah. decision making yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and you can yeah absolutely agree with you you just burn out because you can run for a certain period of time till you suddenly can't run mm -hmm. anymore mm -hmm. so and i think focusing that... on small incremental yeah 100 percent 100 percent will keep you in the game for much longer yeah and, and then three four five months down the line you realize actually one habit i developed showing up for my workouts mm. yeah because can... yeah consistency is king that, that's it yeah. mm. but you know at the same time you mentioned these habits right that we have to build these habits which i 100 percent agree on yet the predicament that we find ourselves in is based upon that time management matrix idea from Stephen Covey, which yeah. is so fitting, is you don't have to develop the habit. That's the problem. I think this is the, the missing piece why people are so highly dependent upon motivation because going to work, you actually have to do it. Yeah. Even if you don't like it, it's it, it working going to your job working your job will turn into a habit even if you don't like it because you have to but with training fitness personal development reading books uh becoming a nicer per person being more patient all these beautiful virtues that a human being can 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 put on display is not something that is required to do or at least you know, for the most part until <laughs> yeah exactly until it is too late and now you are forced to do it i just had a conversation with a young young with a young dude mm -hmm. he was like yo you know i have to lose some weight blah, blah, blah. and i was like i think that's great if you want to do it right now because if you take care of this problem right now it won't haunt you for the next 10 years because the longer you wait to take care of a nagging problem that will slowly develop into a huge mountain that is going to be hard to overcome, better do it now. And I think Dan John shared this with me. He said, men, especially men, lose themselves in the ages between 18 and 30. Because most men jump into the bar life or the chasing women life and, and, and the whatever have you life, the get rich quick life. <laughs> And then, and then you lose yourself in, in, at the end because you're not focusing or, or because you're losing focus and because you're not required to do these habits. I think that's, man, imagine if we had a government program forcing everybody to work out. I mean, wouldn't probably be the I best probably thing. Probably like wouldn't go uh, wash well with uh, all the drug companies, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> why to work out if you can have a pill like yeah okay i don't i don't feel well like uh exactly I'm overweight, exactly like, oh you're, well, you're so right mm. uh, yeah. should should i change my habits no here's the pill here's the pill you, you know funny thing you're mentioning a, a, a good point i just read that the the supplement industry is twice the size of the gym industry and the reason is simple people just want to drink a shake and it's done quick fix, it's done quick fix it's done i have to put in some work no 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 oh i gotta drink a shake slim fast and i'm done oh that that's that's my cup of tea <laughs> yeah. but it's it's new, like human this. nature right it's human nature and i don't want you know i don't want to exclude myself from this i mean I, in certain areas i'm sim we all have these similar um tendencies so we are forced to to pull ourselves back and and and, and do it the hard way right right just well, like learning with kettlebells it's like training with kettlebells exactly, exactly. Like, yeah <laughs> it's, i think uh, uh, yeah yeah I'm, I'm, I, I took this on a completely different route brother so yeah uh, we want to talk about kettlebells and now we're talking about habits and stuff no well to but, be fair the uh, training with the kettlebell is actually one of the good like in some way easier way to develop a habit like mm -hmm. I, let's wow. say if we're taking me like i one of the reason 
like before I used to go in the gym as a part of my job. I was in the gym. I could jump on equipment whenever pretty much I had a gap. I could, uh, and I couldn't understand why people don't go in the gym like, because I already was in the gym. I was already there. With the kettlebell, uh, when you're at home, you're thinking, okay, or in the office, I need to drive or get to the gym. That's going to take me 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Change, shower, train for an hour. Two hours later, I'm back. So I need to carve two hours of my time mm -hmm. to get a, a session. You have mm -hmm. so many barriers in front of you. Yeah, yeah. And it can be hard to develop a habit, but if yeah. you have kettlebell at home, you like only a barrier in front of me is just myself. Like, yeah, I have mm -hmm. million reasons not to do it, and only one reason to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, that's a good. Oh, that's that's a good one. And yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, with the kettlebell, like I find like okay, I put in uh, uh, the <laughs> the dinner in the oven. I know I have thirty minutes. The way how I spend this the next 30 minutes now, I can go and sit on Instagram while I'm waiting, or I can go, I have the gym, uh, I have the kettlebell, which I can just take in the, in the, in the garden and get through some decent 30 minutes workout. By the mm -hmm. time I'm done, the dinner is ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I try to go in the gym, it's mm -hmm. kind of, I'm not going to have enough time to get mm -hmm. in the gym, change, shower, mm -hmm. everything come back on time for a dinner and and yeah and i think you mentioned the driving to the gym right yeah. because i think there's two sides to this it's two hours but they can be very well spent if you yeah. are working with a guy or a gal that is really giving you the most bang for your buck in these in these 30 minutes that you train and yes you have to put in maybe one 90 minutes you have to invest but you get 30 minutes of high quality high return on investment for this time that's spent so it, it might be time well spent but like you mentioned we have many reasons not to do it this is one thing but w another thing where i see where it can become a complete obstacle is if you are in a remote location or like you said i'm outside of london i have to take the train or whatever take one hour to 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 reach a decent gym or like you like many people I, I I'm, I'm I'm assuming you've heard this too is they say many people reached out to us and they say listen I love kettlebells but nobody in my close proximity is teaching this stuff yeah yeah so the only option is to do it online so that's another important part that that's why I we are turning into a hybrid business yeah. where we are serving clients online but we also serve clients in house, right? So it's it's two sides of the coin. Oh, absolutely. And, I mean, like the gym. If you have a choice, like to go in the gym, you kind of once you once you in the gym, you're fully committed. There is kind of well, as soon as you're not coming to to the gym <laughs> to have a chat with other people, but you can't <laughs> yeah. in the or a chat with your iPhone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So as soon as you're not yes. sitting on the bench and yes. checking the Instagram. <laughs> exactly. like, and, exactly. Or See, trying to find yeah, the workout yeah. and what you need to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah, the yeah, gym, yeah. you spend like 15 yeah. minutes searching for the workouts on exactly. Instagram. Like, exactly, exactly. Uh, so, yeah, so mm -hmm. it's like, like, two different, yeah, it's whatever need, works kind of in, uh, in different, for different people working. Yeah. Different, like, mm. Someone need to get outside of the house into the gym where like a right environment, they in the zone. They mm -hmm. just like can go for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Some people just need to maybe build up a habit of continuous exercise and just kind of making sure this workouts are part of the training or, mm -hmm. or so part of the weekly and daily routine. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, it's kind of i think it's like different levels as well it's same like yes sometimes yes, yes. if i you know even like a training as well if you're trying to sell someone like oh we're going to be doing long cycle for 10 minutes like, or we're, we're going, <laughs> for your first time <laughs> yeah what we're going to do next week well yeah. the next week we're going to do long cycle for 10 minutes yeah. <laughs> what we're the... going to do next time like say kind of 
there is ways that yeah you kind of need to in some way you need to present it something what they want and kind of squeeze in something what they need exactly you have this like a pie like or yeah. <laughs> a sandwich yeah yeah where you kind of trying to wrap it in quite a nice wrapper so it's yeah. look quite yeah it look, yeah. nice and they like excited about this and yeah. you call, uh, call it like fat burning workouts yeah yeah exactly is it any different to muscle building workout no let's just do it okay yeah. <laughs> it's just when people ask me well why are you why are you titling this clickbait video as workout for a man over 40 everybody can do this no really <laughs> really everybody can do a swing of course you're right but there is uh, you, you mentioned the wrapper you have to wrap it in a certain way that people gravitate towards it yeah and this is a tough job for a fitness professional to do because you're actually giving them something you mentioned this word many times now you actually serve them something that's uncomfortable really getting into the zone working out it's sweaty it's intense you have to learn you have to sit down you have to take a breather you feel like oh man i don't know if that's the right thing so it and the changing of the habits when it comes to your nutrition so there's a lot of uncomfortable situations that you will engage yourself in but you have to sell it on the emotional side that's something that i am now focusing on as well and learning even more about it it's you have to sell the emotional uh, part first and then we can talk about the logical and the 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 stuff that you then actually have to do and that's why you have to wrap your your product in a way that it's um appeasing people while at the same time triggering what people want and at the same time not lying to people that that's not easy <laughs> no, one hundred percent. How how you can sell the basic push, pull, uh, hinge, yeah. and squat? Yeah. Uh, yeah. How you can sell this in such a like amazing and fantastic way that everyone like, oh, that's exactly what that's I need. Exactly Not the pill, want, yeah. but I need push, pull, exactly. <laughs> hinge, and squat. <laughs> it's clear. It's. I think I've I've read in one book from Alex Ormosi, uh, which uh, I've read his book so many times because it's so fascinating. It's called How to uh i think 100 million dollar offer oh, yeah. is the book great called book. It, it's a great book so and that's exactly the point is where you are you want to decrease the time that people have to spend in this uncomfortable zone and this is easier said than done because we all know weight loss or just getting in shape takes a long time but you can maybe jump start their journey with an intense program where they get some quick results and quick wins and this is what keeps them hooked then this is something that i understand now as well but it's not easy to sell so if you are a fitness professional and we have a lot of coaches tuning into the podcast and if you're doing a great job of selling fitness you can sell everything i think because it's it's a hard thing to sell well it's amazing i think that's amazing skill yeah in any in any way you kind of like if you're trying to sell yourself to someone if you're yeah. trying to sell the product or if you're trying to sell exercise or training with the kettlebell how to present it to someone that you know it will be good for them mm -hmm. but they know exactly that's actually like i want to try it like even the kettlebell like when you show the kettlebell a lot of people are like oh it's like it seems like quite complicated and hard anything hard and complicated till you spend some time give it some exactly. energy to, into that and mm -hmm. then it's become less hard and mm -hmm. less painful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah, it's uh, many skills you have to learn especially yeah. well someone like someone like uh, like you yourself as well you <laughs> You have to film. You have to edit. You have to sell. You have to. Yeah, it's a, it's a, I'm, coach as a pro. You know, if you are, I mean, you do this too. You do this too. So it's you are wearing you you are required to wear many hats, especially if you if you're starting out, and and, and then at 
at one place to maybe realize, okay, I have to uh, maybe employ somebody for a, cup, a couple of things, or maybe I have to branch out and, and do some freelancing work, or have some freelancers do a couple of stuff, a couple of things that, that you do. Because it's it's it can be quite overwhelming. I mean, now we're we're selling kettlebells. We're thinking about selling shoes now. Uh, we're selling online programs. We're selling in-house memberships. It's 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 it becomes this huge behemoth. The more that you put into it, and you see, and the beautiful thing is, there's so much coming back. So you know you're on the right track. But it's yeah, you're required to really really wear a lot of hats and and, and do it well. And and I have a question about the the content. I mean. We, we've uh, touched on this briefly before we started the recording. Why do you think um, your Instagram and your YouTube, I mean, you started your YouTube at the same time as your Instagram? No, to be fair, I had my Instagram a long time ago, oh. but I wasn't really focusing on Instagram. I don't really know why I started the YouTube and kind of... I think it was my personal challenge for myself to do something where I'm quite uncomfortable with it. Like, ah. it, like I'm not okay. really, like, I'm quite introvert, so I'm not, like, find it's easy. Like, oh, yeah, let's do that. Go and speak to some random people or kind of ah. in new environment. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like, oh, yeah, like, it's take me, I kind of usually take my time assess the people like assess the situation yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh so it was quite being uncomfortable so i thought you know what like no one's gonna say it i'm gonna do it like and my kind of i was thinking like i'll try to put, at least help a couple of people who is in like bad situation like they don't know what they're doing they need some workouts like here's like some workouts but I think you get like same like with jujitsu, like you kind of I'm really bad at it. Can I do it a little bit better? Like mm -hmm. you kind of same with like kettlebell slapping your forearms and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like you think that okay, that's just was bad experience, but can I do a little bit better? So you kind of with YouTube it's kind of escalated from there. I'm like, okay. The first videos took me three days to learn the software to edit mm -hmm. and about three days to edit my first video about yeah. three hours to spit out not three hours about yeah 40 minutes 45 minutes to spit out about three sentences mm. <laughs> i love this so, yes yes so it wasn't really a pleasant experience but yes. you're like, okay is it like <laughs> <laughs> but then you kind of once you start getting some sort of feedback, people are like, oh, that's kind of mm. helped me or something. It's kind of drive you and you're trying to show up a little, show, kind of turn up a little bit more often mm -hmm. and show up. And I think YouTube is extremely tricky platform. And yeah, it's a bit of a combination of lack, mm -hmm. but it's more if you're consistent, mm -hmm. you get more lucky. <laughs> Uh, more, oh, good point. Yeah. Oh, yes. More consistent you are, more you kind of show up, the, more lucky you, you get. Yeah, you increase the chances yeah. of being lucky the more good quant content that you put out. That's that's a very that's a very interesting and and high quality statement that you just uh, said. And because it's exactly like this, it's I always consider when you do YouTube, it's like you are throwing your numbers into the lottery oh, and yeah. maybe you're lucky. Yeah. So the main goal on YouTube is to stay in the game where you are always able to, continues, to continuously throw numbers into this big bowl that is spinning that we call the algorithm. And then maybe, boom, it gets picked up. And even, and even if it doesn't get picked up in a viral sense, it can still get picked up by a small community. And then you start building this community, they start celebrating what you're putting out, and then all of a sudden you can build a business with a small community. I mean, the channel doesn't have to be big. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's exactly how you do it. You have to be consistently on it. I mean, I just look back, this is my 1,500th and I think fifth video oh. that I've uploaded on YouTube. How many hours? <laughs> 
crazy amount of hours, right? But I mean, it is two things. I actually like doing it. I like uploading. I, I like creating content. Yeah. I like the editing process. And I also realized that filming and editing required me, especially the, 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 here's the point. I wanted to reduce my time of editing. So in order to reduce my time of editing, I had to become better in my oratory skills or better in filming. So the way I pronounce, the way I talk, the way I speak, the way I show exercises have to be not only just to the point and concise, but I also I'm not allowed to make a lot of mistakes because if I make a thousand mistakes in a one hour video, this means the editing process will become even bigger and longer. Yeah. So out of this idea, I was required to become better in my conversational skills. And long before you know it, this helped me to become a better coach. Because you are now better in your conversational skill and showing stuff. And then, boom, it, it's you, you get to the point quicker. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, I think as well, the best way to kind of uh, to learn yourself is try to teach something. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to. <laughs> so, in so, yeah, like, I'm quite impressed with the amount of like you can kind of be with the consistency of your uh, like YouTube posting as well. It's like, mm. amazing. It's like, you know, it, you, this comes from a. I say I I built this on the on the grave of a buried dream. I was following a dream for 15 years that didn't pan out, that didn't succeed. But I was so gung ho on it. I was so focused on it and I was doing it. I didn't care what everybody else was saying even though I was I was also getting some good advice, but I threw it out the window. I was like, "No, I'm only going to do this." <laughs> so I always had this pitbull like attitude. So if I take a bite, I don't let it go. So imagine if you do something for 10 plus years that doesn't work out, but you still have that bite and you don't let it go. And after 15 years, you realize, okay, I might have to let it go. Then you let it go. And all of a sudden, here comes this chance along your way that is working out. And now you bite into it. Of course, you won't let go. Because now you still have this pit bull mentality. But now you also have something that's working out. So yeah. isn't that awesome? <laughs> nice. So this is where it comes from. I, I, I just want to, the consistency is just because I have this pit bull attitude. I, I take a bite and I won't stop. Well, that, uh, it's worked out really nicely for you. Yeah, it did. But it, it, I mean, it, it's a lot of work that we put into this stuff. So it's, it's, it's not something that comes easy, but it's, it most definitely is valuable. That, I mean, and, and it paid out, it paid back dividends for, 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 for a long time. But see, it's, but it's like you said, it's the consistency, not just with working out and, and your nutrition, everywhere it's consistency. The same with your videos. I mean, I didn't even know that I, your videos didn't give me the vibe of you being an introverted person. You were just, I mean, I, I, first of all, I like the way how you move. I like your, your quality. I like how you uh, present the exercises, the, the, the workouts are awesome, always most bang for your buck. You follow the exact training schedule formula that everybody should follow, this push-pull, squat, hinge, load to carry, anti-rotation, rotation stuff. That's what I'm seeing. That's why I like it. And funny thing is, I was, I'm actually, I have the same genetic, I have the same genetic predisposition like you have. I'm kind of an introverted person. But I, became an extrovert because I considered it like a skill, right? I was like, you know what? Becoming more an extrovert and being more outgoing and becoming better in my conversations and talking to strangers no matter what is a skill. So as, as soon as I changed my mindset and I was like, that's a skill that you can have to learn versus that's a genetic predisposition that I'm born with this changed everything. If you think that you are an introverted person because it's your genetic luck, I would say take this thought to the side 
and consider being an introverted person as yes your nature but becoming an extroverted person is just something that you have to be that you have to build a habit with you just have to become it, it's like it's right we're creature of habits yeah so that's I because I was the same like you I, or uh, at least I had the same I was like assessing everybody and not speaking to everybody and now I'm like hey what's up <laughs> right maybe I'm not so loud but hey I think it's one of those <laughs> things it's like as yeah. you building like it like you it's like a rep more you just have to show up and do your reps you have to exactly man. more more you do more comfortable you become more you more more you showing up for the workouts more comfortable with the workouts more you using the kettlebells like more uh, more comfortable to use the kettlebells more snatches you done more efficient with the snatches you become and better you get so it's, it's like any skill more you showing up <laughs> better you get more you talk to the camera Three years later, you're still uncomfortable, but you less <laughs> it's taking you not 45 minutes, but you kind of you can spit it out in two minutes. <laughs> See, and I think I think this this being uncomfortable or, or let's say like this level of discomfort sometimes can maybe is maybe just something that's in your brain. So it's still like I think I'm still uncomfortable. But when you look at maybe take it from a rational point of view and see, hey, now I can I can speak these senses sentences or let's put it into kettlebells right um i can now do the workout in a more efficient way than i was able a couple of years before then you have no reason to have this thought of being in discomfort because rationally speaking you're not because look at the result you, you get what i'm saying yeah i yeah well look like confidence is like like any like any other skill more you do it more you kind of comfortable being uncomfortable after yeah well while. that's a good point yeah mm. yeah after a while you exactly build up a new habit learn new skill um yeah it's translated quite nicely in anything in yeah 100 so um now with with where you are today um, where your Instagram is really uh, showing some huge numbers and your YouTube as well. Are you, you're taking on new clients and uh, have you, uh, or, or are you, or where, where do you want to go in the kettlebell sphere? Is it just, hey man, I just want to build my business, serve everybody that I can, or do you have a goal where you're like, hey, this is what I want to achieve. I want to, I want to build a legacy or something like this. Well, I would like to, yeah, I think it's one of those uh, things is, I didn't expect it will happen, but then you like, oh, actually it's happening. Let's use it and like how I can use it to help as many people as I can in terms of change the way how they may be trained, the way how they live, their habits, so kind of help them to be better than uh, kind of better than uh, better than yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, I think the kettlebell is one of the probably <laughs> tools I'm using for that. <laughs> yeah, so, and I don't know, it's like, right. In some way, like more people can use the kettlebell and more I can kind of teach yeah. people like how to use it mm. is, is better, like, because I think it's fantastic tool. It's great, like not only time saver, but yeah, you can improve your yeah fitness, endurance, mm. strength. Mm. You can like, build some decent amount of muscles, and mm. like, yeah, mm. so you're not gonna become probably Mister Olympia with the kettlebell, but at the same time, you still can be one of the strongest dude in the crowd, like. Mm. so more i can build like strong parents who don't have time like to mm. train more mm -hmm. i can show they actually can do it mm. it's not always have to be like 
complicated or spent hours like you know maybe in the gym like you can do it anywhere and like kettlebell is such a great tool you can grab it go in the garden you can uh, I have some clients who take the kettlebells when they're on the road like mm, yeah they, yeah like in the past they might have had this excuse like I can't train because I have to travel a lot but now they just can put it in the boot and they train in the hotel room or in the car park load like and mm. it's like it's amazing to see that people can use it pretty much anywhere and it's not excuse anymore like oh I can't because it just can't exactly like, yeah. there's so so many benefits that the kettlebell provides us with it's just that's why you know I when I compare it to all the tools that are available barbells machines dumbbells calisthenics kettlebells I think calisthenics is something that is awesome because you 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 have you always have your body with you yeah Yet at the same time, I think the kettlebell serves you some unique and distinct benefits that surpass all. And and doesn't mean that it's, I have to put it like this. I think it's the best generalist tool that exists because it touches so many bases of physical qualities that you can build, which I find is so fascinating and something that I, that you cannot do with a barbell or with a dumbbell or with, with your body weight only. So uh, I, I tend to gravitate towards saying that the kettlebell is one of the best tools for, let's say, like the general populace who just needs a little bit of strength, a little bit more muscle, a little bit more cardiovascular endurance, uh, wants to improve back pain, doesn't have a lot of time, can't spend a lot of time, maybe doesn't want to go to the gym, has maybe some beat up joints, so they need something that's low impact for the joints, has to be minimalist because they don't have to think about, and they don't want to think too much. So it's so many, so many benefits all in one in, in the kettlebell. That's why, yeah. And that's why I, th I, I think as well, with like even like I had series of the workouts just to, especially in the, like at a certain point in pandemic, I kind of released series of the workouts just to show how much you can do with one piece of equipment and you don't need a lot you don't need full gym of different machines you don't need you don't have yeah you can't use that as excuse maybe like i can't train because i don't know how to use the machine like but if you kind of learn how to handle kettlebell well safely like you can do so many different things 100 well you can then you can say like well now now you learn all this stuff let's shrink it down to five exercises <laughs> and focus on the <laughs> that'll give you a lot of bang for your buck yeah. bang for your back exactly yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's just funny you know when i did this this little instagram video about uh funny versus what was it funny versus use uh, fancy versus useful oh uh, yeah said, and yeah. so everybody was commenting on it not everybody but some you know some of the folks that you follow or know as well they commented on it which I've, i i think it's funny that what i have even though i love kettlebells i'm detaching my personal self from it so if you say something bad about the kettlebell i listen because maybe you have a point and then it's just, well, that's it. But it's funny how sometimes you may be stepping, or, you know, not stepping, but maybe it is. You step on somebody's toes if you even make a joke about stuff where people are sort of emotionally, emotionally attached to the way they train or to the, to the, to the uh, tool that they use. But the point that I was trying to get across with this video is, and you probably experienced this as well because you are working with normal regular people and I consider myself also regular people and that is since they need most bang for their buck since they don't have a huge time window you better make sure you give them exercises that fulfill all the requirements that a strong to build a strong muscular high endurance body and that that doesn't leave you with 
many options. Well, of course, yes, the kettlebell, like you mentioned, you can do a many exercises with it, and many are fun, and many are cool, and you can dabble around with it. And like you, you've mentioned this as well, if you master the basics, you can mentor out on your own, yes. But most people just need the basics because they're not into the tool, or maybe not as much into the tool as you and me are. What, what, what's, your, what's your thoughts on this? Well, coming back to the sandwich, when you, <laughs> when you have to... <laughs> give them what they uh, they uh, what they want what they need what they want so it's one of days that i i know they need squat push pull hinge but they also want to do uh i don't know some like flicking the kettlebell around like and do some juggling so in, sometimes you just to lure them in to kind of you, sometimes you feel like Okay, I need to give some exercises, which maybe not necessarily, let's say, take crunches, yeah? Mm -hmm. Everyone love crunches, have, like, get the bit of a ab burn, like, but would it be uh, more beneficial than a squat or rack squat? Mm -hmm. Would it be more mm -hmm. beneficial than mm -hmm. a single arm press? Mm -hmm. No, but everyone want to do it sometimes you have to give them what they want because if you don't give people what they want sometimes you don't get the attention either because okay mm -hmm. like, so you kind of i ask you to do this but you're giving me something different i know mm -hmm. i need to do it but you're not listening <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of yeah, so it's been like, like as an example, like there was um, one of my colleagues back in uh, in the days in the gym, like he was obsessed like, with the lifting heavy. So whoever would come to him, he would like, all you need to do is lift weights, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is true. Mm -hmm. But like people like, oh, I want to like, want to burn some fat. I want to lose some little bit of cardio, get the sweat. No, you need to like, you need to lift for heavy but, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he would lose clients because mm -hmm. he wasn't listening like so you kind of need to kind of sometimes find something like find the balance once yeah. once they in it once they have your full attention then you kind of okay now let's say let's focus on that mm -hmm. And I, I know a lot of people with the kettlebell were in, like, let's take uh, simple and sinister. Like you just do going through two exercises. You're going through swing and the Turkish get out. So that's your main, what you need to, and if you say something, we're going to do two exercises for two years or three years till you build to 48 kilos, you're like, nah. It's like coming into school and they pile up all the books on the table. That's what we're going to learn. You need to give them book at the time. You need mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. give them different options. And I had yeah. some clients yeah. who simple and sinister type, uh, type of training. It was they doing once a week and we progressed really nicely, but other days they're doing some other stuff the other mm -hmm. days they have a bit of a let's say fun like 80 20 <laughs> rule mm -hmm. when you have mm -hmm. what you need to do and 20 percent of that uh fun mm -hmm. um yeah yeah they like if i just said like oh that's all what we're gonna do for for a year now yeah it will be like yeah you lost me now i yeah. might go and see like this guy having much more fun on instagram like page yeah like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah and, then, I and, then they, his, and then they go there. there and funny and funny thing is then they go there and then they realize oh well it's more fun yeah. it's too much fun and not a lot of substance i i like the way how you put it it's substance first and then we can use some fun right so that that's what counts yeah you just need to i think it's like you need to i think everyone need to farm what they enjoy most i had some yeah. people like who absolutely can't stand turkish get up at the same time i have a lot of people who love turkish get up you just with the kettlebells you just need to try different things see what you enjoy the most and kind of and start building on that like yeah and yeah. 
yeah, I've done some uh, the workouts where you like follow a long workout, no repeat. Do I really think it's a great way? No repeat, maybe not necessary. I like to go through the exercises over and over again. But if you'd gone through this workout, felt great, and you want to show up again tomorrow, and again after tomorrow, the job is kind of, we're getting somewhere. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think there is kind of, for every credible position, it's like there is certain time where like maturity when you like realize, actually, I don't need more, I just need less and more effective. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 100 percent man and Agree. but it's i think it's take time when you already build the habits of training when you already like try different things and realize actually that's exactly what i need the most me trying to keep telling people it's like telling kids sometimes like that's what you need to do they're like that's what exactly i'm not doing mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah 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 so uh so it's um it's something yeah it, everyone is different everyone unique some you just need to find with everyone different approach <laughs> exactly you know I, I i would say that even though people are different we are there are there is common ground everybody needs a squat, a press, a hinge, a, a, a loaded carry. Everybody can benefit from a swing. But like you mentioned with the wrapper, the way you wrap it, the way you present it is the key. That's something that I realized not a long time ago. It, it, it's, yes, the, the product and the programming might be similar, but depending on the audience that you're talking to, you have to present it in a different way and then maybe use some different tactics for different crowds. I think that's that's the key. So, Pavel, uh, let's wrap this up. Where can people find you? Where is the best address that people can reach out to get in contact with you? Uh, well, uh, YouTube, Pavel Krotov, and pretty much exactly the same Instagram. They're quite linked in. Um, yeah, and it's that's probably the two easiest ways to find right. me and if people have any questions or would like to check awesome. their channel and instagram they're more than welcome so Great. always happy to hear from new people awesome so pavel hey man thank you so much for joining it was an awesome conversation <laughs> thank you very much my pleasure i thought this will be 20 minutes somehow we're... yeah it was a little bit longer <laughs> a little bit longer yeah we, most most of these podcasts take about almost two hours or just one hour and 45 minutes it's just because i and it's it's a simple reason i love learning about how other people got into kettlebells and i i love to be exposed to different ideas and maybe even ideas that i maybe disagree with right because it's that this is the biggest like I mentioned um, and I think I've mentioned this on this podcast so many times it is just one of the biggest and best learning potentials that I have had is just talking to everybody in the kettlebell sphere and then listening to these opinions and then you know taking what is good discarding what is what maybe doesn't fit just like the Bruce Lee approach and, and that's how I do it no, that's that. To be fair, it's same like when I remember when I went to um, like a course. I think it was three months course or something, learning Olympic lifting, right? And I was quite into kettlebells by then, and was trying like, oh, they snatching. Like I was yeah. asking, what do you think about kettlebell snatch? They just laughed at me. Like they like, <laughs> it's just like okay. Oh, yeah. And mm. it's not because it's bad tool, because they just like. They use different equipment. They, yeah, yeah they m may be married to this, uh, like <laughs> sometimes, yeah. Good point. They're married yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And mm. you don't want to look elsewhere. You see, kind of, which is absolutely fine. But what I learned in, over the years, like, even though it's certain stuff, maybe I'm not necessarily agree or it's not always wrong yeah because like some yeah. people find yeah like take zumba class i think uh it's something i wouldn't do or think like oh it's a great form of activity but if it brings you 
in week week after week after week and yes. if you can't fun you enjoy if you, it. yeah you enjoy it yeah. go do it and see this this is where the discussion or maybe sometimes people miss the point if you are enjoying let's take this example zumba class so you are now in a environment you meet new people you're maybe not as outgoing right so now all of a sudden you're in this class you're having fun it's awesome you go on a regular basis and you're enjoying it that's awesome and that is laudable and everybody should find their their hill that they want to die on right so it's yeah. that's great but and here's the only but that i'm having is it time well invested when it comes to return on investment i just uh, recently somebody asked me this qu question i was like listen if you want to invest in stocks and i have two options to present you with i'm giving you option a which gives you a little bit of return and then i have option b which gives you massive returns which one would you choose you would choose probably b right because the money that you're investing is better spent because the return is better. So the layer of the question just becomes a little bit different. It's not just about enjoyment every, anymore. Because yes, enjoyment is important, but you also mentioned this throughout the podcast because of the audience that you're working with, how important it is to find time to do it. So if you find time to do stuff, and it doesn't give you as much investment, uh, as much return on your investment, it might be a, an option for you to, to look out and just scan if there's other stuff around that can maybe give you some more bang for your buck. That's the only point that I'm raising when it comes to stuff like, yeah, but as long as people enjoy it, that's good. I agree wholeheartedly. However, if it is time, when it comes to the discussion, it, is it time well spent when it comes to the return that they're getting? This is a different answer, I, or a different question then. Yeah, I think, yeah, like, I completely agree. It's like, they, I think it's one, it's like one of those, and it's become like, oh, what is better, the gym, the kettlebell, this, running, so you kind of, uh, yeah, we, I think first you need to, and to be fair, I'm happy with the people like, if you like the kettlebells, I would love to have you and kind of talk to you. But if you like the gym, it's a, it's absolutely fine. If you're happy, just yeah, yeah, yeah. Most use, definitely. It's like, yeah, Most if definitely. you like running, it's not a bad thing. As soon as you found something, what you. But if I may, but if I may interject real quick, Pablo, and that's just from a rational perspective, let's compare these weightlifting, running, and kettlebells right from a rational perspective which one might give you the most bang for your buck for the time invested if you are if you belong to the general population i'm not talking about a strong man or some kind of extreme who wants to pull 500 kilos or wants to become mr olympia or wants to run a marathon because these are let's let's put it like this that's the fringe extreme to a certain extent but for the general populace in your opinion in your informed educated opinion which tool would give help them the most weightlifting running kettlebells well my personal like let's say because i'm more uh, invested in that i would always especially now uh choose the kettlebell and why because you can do like you can do strength endurance power loads of stuff yeah so you can uh I think the reason why, let's say, so many people choose running because you don't need to learn the skill. Oh, all you that's a to, good point. Uh, yeah. you, you, all, yeah. all you need investment is in pair of trainers, which you can mm -hmm. buy for, I don't know, reasonably cheap. And that's it. You don't need to learn something different. All you need to do is just go outside and run. Mm -hmm. Come mm -hmm. back. You sweat it. You got Even though running is a skill too, right? Running is a skill too well true <laughs> yeah 
Yeah. But so, you but, get, but like, I get instant, what I get. What you're saying, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you get instant kind of feedback. You managed to break a sweat, got the heart rate. Uh, at mm. Mm. Two weeks later, you can go uh, run a little bit better and kind of improve mm. your speed mm. or kind of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with any kettlebell gym. You suddenly need to invest a little bit more if you don't have a skill you might need a coach if you don't uh don't know mm -hmm. how to do it mm -hmm. you need mm -hmm. a coach if mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. these yeah these are yeah that's that's a good perspective these i think are the, i can the see downsides. why a yeah. lot of people pick mm -hmm. uh running and stick to the running because mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. less time to learn skill but is it the best to get stronger? Absolutely not. Will you build any muscle or as will you tone up? No, you will not tone up because and I, oh, it will burn through the muscles. <laughs> yeah, and, and now that you're mentioning it, I think I've read this study. I think it was stronger by science. Mm. I think 67% or something like this, I think they were, they were inquiring folks who train or folks who exercise. And then they were assessing what kind of goals they are meeting. And I think from this pool of folks who are exercising on a regular basis, they said that 67% of these people achieve their cardio goals, but only 20 something percent achieve their strength goals. So, so here's the, the missing link. And you're mentioning these interesting downsides, yes. But if we look at it from a rational perspective, running is a skill too. You've mentioned a pair of shoes. If you want a high quality one, so don't kill your feet, you have to invest, yeah, a little bit more and money. Like a kettlebell. <laughs> and like a kettlebell. Oh, yeah. here you go. So the coach is maybe the only thing that you have to learn, uh, or maybe that you want to get into, but since we live in a day and age where everything is consumed on, in, on, on, on the internet, you can just watch a few videos and get into the swing of things, even if your technique isn't perfect. And science even proves this, that even if your technique isn't perfect and the weight is not too heavy and you ha don't have form breaking mistakes, you still have benefits, even if your form isn't perfect. So from a rational perspective, and that's, that's just the point that I'm coming from because I love barbells. I, I love machines. I love dumbbells, even though I haven't touched the machine in years now. But I love that stuff. But from a rational perspective, I consider the kettlebell to be a, the, the most superior tool from the family of weights because it does so much at the same time. I 100% agree with you. And I, like, I think that's another skill like... like you and I have to like deliver that to yeah. people to explain yeah. in the right way. Because yeah. again, if someone want to tone up or lose some weight, the initial kind of reaction, initial thought, they're like, I need to run, mm. but you kind of, mm. they, me telling them like, okay, you're going to burn through muscles. So you're going to be a smaller version of yourself and a weaker version of yourself than you started <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Uh, mm. compared to if you pick up the kettlebell you can get the benefits of uh, endurance you can get both benefits, worlds yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. uh, of strength uh, the skill is like actually if, to sell it and it's presented in yeah. that way that people yeah. actually like you know what i believe you let's try it <laughs> yeah yeah that that's the ultimate goal we have to yeah. become better salesmen so well, hey Papa. Better, better advocate of kettlebell. Better advocates <laughs> and better salesmen. It's just a fact. You know, having your marketing down pat as a fitness professional. I and maybe you've heard this too, how many fitness professionals say this. Well, I'm not good at selling, I'm not good at this. Well then you have to just become better at selling. You have to Facebook, for example, Facebook ads, that's a skill. The, uh, uh, the marketing in, in general, your content, that's a skill. Talking in front of a camera, that's a skill. Having great conversational skills, it, it, everything is a skill. And like we have already found out, we have to wear many hats, right? When we are self-employed. So, hey, Pavel, yeah. thank I thank you so much for joining, brother. It was awesome having a conversation with you. I'll send you all the links. Once it's done, it's going to be on YouTube, on the podcast, on the YouTube podcast. It's going to be on Spotify.
Oh, and all, all the podcasts, so I'm going to send you all the links and then you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, well, thank once again, thank you very much for having me. And You're yeah, pleasure to talk to you. And by the way, I want to say like you have some quite uh, look like good quality kettlebells uh, over there. Yeah, <laughs> so, we do. So they, this looking good. Quite, uh, yeah, so. yeah we, we really love them. It's the... the, the, the we, and here's another point, you know, it's, I call them super flow kettlebells because the flow with a hollow core is just better with the ballistics because the weights, it's closer to your hips in the backswing, in the yeah. clean, in the snatch. To the handle as well. And, and towards the handle. So you have better contact with the weight. You transfer more energy into the weight as it sits higher on the handle. So the flow is different. It doesn't, it doesn't. Uh, grab the grab the gravitational pull is not as ugly when you drop the weight, even with the heavier ones. So it feels way better. That's why I coined them Superflow, and we're we're sold out. It, it's crazy. I mean, we have a couple of 28s, and the 32s. These are the ones that we can only sell in Switzerland because the the no one deliver it. the delivery prices. I'm, I'm I'm working with DHL, right? And DHL and our local carrier, and DHL is for local great for international with these weights you can't it's it's unbelievably pricey you nobody's gonna buy these kettlebells if we would charge the price that that dhl wants so we have another more uh, cost effective uh, version to to send internationally a matter of fact just today somebody ordered from france wow. yesterday somebody ordered from switzerland a couple of days ago was the united states and it, it's it's crazy it's and latvia you, you, what's your what's your origin country? Latvia, yeah. Latvia, right? Yeah. Somebody ordered two kettlebells from Latvia. Oh, it's <laughs> it, yeah, it's mess. And we're coming up with these shoes, right? These these uh, I call them flat kicks. It's just oh, yeah, ultra minimalist shoes, who are really it's like they're like slippers. You pull them on, and it, actually we're testing them now for a month because I use them every day in the gym to see how they how they are quality wise, and then we can define the price. But so many people actually already said, yes, 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 we want to, we're more, in, we're interested in these shoes. So there's so many possibilities, man. And oh, I think that's amazing. That's what, like YouTube, it's just amazing. It's how managed to help you to build a brand, build a yeah. business, just yeah. multiply uh, streams. And yeah. yeah, it's like, yeah. you've done a fantastic job over there. Wow. Appreciate it, brothers. I, I believe like one of the first you just started a bit of a like as a like a vlogging in some ways. And am I wrong? Like some of your first videos. Yeah, like, the German videos. Uh, the the German stuff that I did was completely different. Was vlogging? Yes, I was just driving and then talking to the camera, which you shouldn't do, by the way. Don't do it. Uh, <laughs> not not because it, I mean, of course, it's dangerous. So I've stopped doing this. But the other thing is. Uh, I got into a legal argument with somebody and then they I had to show up to the to the police station and then they showed this video where I was looking driving and looking down to the camera. And then uh, they were like, Oh, we're gonna charge you or oh, this you're gonna be fined and oh that was crazy. So don't do it. This is not a good thing. But I started with this vlogging stuff in German only and I was just trying to find my way. And then funny thing is, man, I I posted a kettlebell video because I was like, Well, let's out of nowhere in 2018 or 17 i was like let's just because i bought some kettlebells for the gym right yeah and then i was like let's do a video a couple of deadlifts press and stuff and this german video took off so the algorithm was like that's good yeah it took off and so that's the reason why i started focusing more on kettlebells okay. because this one video took off it that's that's the starting that's the inception of the kettlebell brand of what we're doing with kettlebells now <laughs> it's universe crazy told, universe algorithm of algorithm told you exactly where exactly you need to go. <laughs> exactly i think it was god telling me through a youtube yeah. video this is the way you gotta yeah. go son so yeah. let's do it and, and years i did it later years later yeah you, it's you never look back i it's, don't look back yeah yeah it's it's and you know i mean the the, the kettlebell world from from an expert perspective it's not that big so we know we know a lot of people now from all around the world so uh, the potential in in this space is massive it, it's the, the 
the, the popularity of kettlebells is only growing each year. So from a from a um, from a monetary perspective or from an economic perspective, there's growth. So we are in a market that is actually growing. And from a expert perspective or legacy perspective, you have to imagine it's only maybe 20 years ago that Pavel Tsatsoulin came up with the, I call it the kettlebell renaissance because the kettlebell was around earlier. Yeah. No. But it died. It, it, it went out of fashion, in, at least in the West. So Pavel resurrected the idea of kettlebells in the West. And that was what? 24 years ago? 25 maybe? Yeah. So that's such a short time frame. And so we have so much exploring to do with kettlebells. So that's why I see this massive potential down the line. 100% agree with you. <laughs> yeah. But, so brother, All really right. enjoyed it. Uh, uh, gonna reach out to you once everything's done. Thank you. And uh, I mean, we'll stay connected. We follow each yeah. other, so we stay connected, right? Uh, listen, my pleasure. It's, yeah, it's nice to chat with you. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. I hope you Same crop here. a lot of stuff out of uh, all this uh, blabbing. Like. No, it's going to be unedited, brother. It's uh, no unedited. <laughs> <laughs> unedited, yeah, because it's a conversation. That's yeah, exactly no, what it is. Of course, I maybe maybe I cut away some of the stuff at the end, but yeah. the, the idea, it's a conversation. So, yeah. and that's how people have conversations, right? Well, so as I said, you're my first podcast. <laughs> uh, so honored. Quite interesting <laughs> to see what's going to come out from yeah. that. It's probably, but it will be like one of those, like sometime later, you're like, oh my God, will I just shut up over there? <laughs> no, nah, I mean, you know, I, I, I mean, I always uh, create or, or my idea of having a podcast is letting the guests talk as much as I can. And sometimes I have to pull myself back because I'm a very talkative person. I have the gift of gap, so I can't stop talking. But um, in these podcasts, I always want to learn. So you did nothing wrong, mate, with just, just talking. So it's all good. <laughs> if you want to take your kettlebell coaching career to the next level, consider getting certified with Libby Stock. Check the first link in the description.